I used to be against rereading books mostly because I feel like there are so many things that are new that we can read like you you you've already spent time in that universe you've already learned the characters and so much and so forth and then recently I reread The Eyes of Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston something that I reread often which is is weird right because maybe I should rephrase that I think there are certain books that you should spend time with over and over and over again and after my reread of Their Eyes Are Watching God and Beloved earlier this year I realized that there are a lot of books that I kind of want to spend time with again right I was in a different place um when I read them first go around I am a different person now right our perspectives on things change as we grow that's a, that's what's supposed to happen we're supposed to grow up get new information and change our minds okay um so if you like to hear some some books <laughs> that I want to reread stick around hi friends welcome back to Shelby and the Book Club. I'm Shelby Monet, and in today's video we are going to talk about this pile of books here that I want to reread and this isn't even all of them right um but a few things before we get into this list some of these um I will be rereading soon the rest of them I'll get to them when I can get to them right because there is a lot of new stuff coming out that I also want to read um and getting into the groove of reading 100 plus books a year um I'm still figuring out how to prioritize myself so I just want to throw that out there um if you want to see some other books that I would like to reread um because there are some on the shelf right here like A Woman of Endurance I want to read that again um Lone Women by Victor Laval. I'm not as far removed from it as I would like to be to read it again but like those are just a few like there are a bunch of books that I want to experience again um so if you like this video please make sure you like comment subscribe and let me know that you would like to see a part two a part three a part whatever and I can do that for you um without further ado let's get into it Okay, these aren't necessarily in any particular order, um, but two of them are by the same author, so we're going to do those two first. Um, Ta-Nehisi Coates, Between the World and Me. Um, my copy is a little jacked up, but something that I love is this is from my Uncle Mark. I will keep this forever. Um, this is one of his most popular books it's not super long um 152 pages and it is a conversation um and a letter to his son just about the world right and <sighs> the struggles of being a black man and how to navigate that and so on and so forth. I actually really enjoyed this when I read it for the first time. Um, but I also, I don't think I was, I'm going to say this loosely for a lack of better words, but I don't think I was smart enough at the time. 2016, almost 10 years ago, what, I was 20, 2016 I can't do math if I'm 30 now so what I was 18 baby I wasn't <laughs> I always been a smart kid okay always been a smart girl I wasn't getting from this what I should have been getting from this the other reason why I wanted to reread it is because he has another nonfiction coming out in the fall that I'm super excited about um and we'll be reading on my podcast with my friend so wanted to reread that um next up another book by Ta-Nehisi Coates The Water Dancer this is his 
I'm not gonna say his only fiction because he has written um comic books I don't know if y'all know that about him but he has written comic books um The Water Dancer it is a historical fiction with magical realism first time I read it I thoroughly enjoyed it excuse me a lot of people hate this book I don't know why so I want to reread it to see if I can see the vision for why people hate it because I enjoyed it again I think the thing that we don't account for when we are reading is is our growth like reading so much you grow you 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 your your thought processes change you don't like the things that you used to like and all of that so that can change how you see something this may have been one of the not one of the first historical fiction I've always loved historical fiction but I think one of the first historical fiction that I read that really like used magical realism in it and I love that aspect of it I don't remember like uh, the reader that I was then is not the reader that I am now I might hate it now I might hate it that's what this is you know that's what this journey is for so those are the two tiny heasy quotes next up we have the 12 tribes of Hattie by Ayana Mathis. I never see people talking about this book. I don't know why y'all are not talking more about this book. Um, because it was great. I love historical fiction. I love um histories of families. I love like all of that is my jam. And this book is the epitome of that. Like it talks about Hattie, it talks about her 12 children and how the decisions that Hattie made affects her kids and the decisions that they made and so on and so forth so i'm super excited to read this again this is another book i the audiobook is phenomenal phenomenal uh it's an audiobook that i've listened to time and time again but i've never had a physical copy of this i've never physically read it um so i do want to go through annotate and just see what the experience is like uh, physically reading this so I'm super excited about that next my buddy my pal the man in the basement by Walter Mosley Walter Mosley is one of my favorite authors um I really hope that I get to meet him or interview him one day so that I can embarrass myself and scream in that man's face like just full-on like hollering in this man's face okay <laughs> i love him so much this is a weird mystery um the main character um charles blake charles blakey he <laughs> he needs some money and a man comes to his house and says i am going to set up a prison for myself in your basement for fifty thousand dollars cash and charles like what <laughs> but then he was like i mean say say hey man say man hey man say man do what it is you see fit run me my money um and it kind of goes through that whole thing so i would like to read this again because it was i feel like this was a little progressive for when it came out like it was a little i was like what what all is um what's happening here it's a little weird and i think i read this for the first time in high school and then i read it again i don't know if i read that with the book club or what i don't remember but i read it again a couple years ago and i want to read it now so this came out 2020 2004 Hmm. man in the basement also a lot of y'all have never read anything by walter mosley and i don't i don't i'm not here to shame you <sighs> yes i am what's wrong with you why you ain't never what's what all is happening all this work i do you're just not gonna read no all right i mean okay um next the book of night women by marlon 
James, what, what all are y'all doing upstairs? You don't see me trying to... Oh, okay. Um, this is a historical fiction. It is about Lilith, who is born into slavery on a Jamaican sugar plantation. Um, and I'm telling you right now, this is a very dark book. If you cannot handle, excuse me, the darkness, do not read this. And y'all know that I never give those kind of, I never give content warning, right? Because although I understand people wanting the content warning because we've all been through trauma and we've all experienced certain things and so on and forth, I, I understand that. But and also fiction is a way to heal us. And if we are constantly running from the things in our real lives, Maybe if we face them through other characters, we might be able to adjust a little different. So I don't always um, give content warnings. I also don't give content warnings when it comes to historical fiction because I feel like the least that I can do for my ancestors is to bear witness. The very least I can do for them is to bear witness. It's the least that you could do also as well. Okay? Okay. Um, but Marla James... His writing, phenomenal. <laughs> um, I actually also would like to read, again, his other book, um, Black Leopard, Red Wolf, and The Moon Witch, Spider King. I have not read, those That those are his fantasies. I have not read them yet. Um, I want to read this. I remember reading it the first time and walking away and feeling like Marlon James hated women. Um, again, I am a different reader. I'm a different reader now. Um, I'm a different woman than the woman that I was the first time that I read this. Um, so I'm curious. And I remember speaking about this book to someone and I was like, yeah, it feels like he hates women. And it was a man that was like, I don't think so. And I'm like, of course you wouldn't think so. Cause you're a man. I mean, I might don't be wrong. I might don't be wrong right he he might actually do hate women um next we have in the upper country which i did do a review on this the reason that i want to read this again is because i recently read well earlier this year i read um the american daughters i'm looking up because it's up there and i always want to say carlos maurice ruffin opposed to maurice Carlos Ruffin so I have to look at it but I read The American Daughters and The American Daughters is essentially a story of a story which I also did a video on you guys can go back and watch those um and it reminded me of the experience reading in the upper country so this is a mystery um it takes place in the 1800s in Dunmore a Canadian town settled by people fleeing enslavement in the American South, young Lucinda Martin works for a crusading black journalist. One night, a slave hunter is shot dead by an old woman who recently arrived. And I was buddy reading this with my friend Courtney. Hi, Courtney. I love you. Um, and we both were kind of like, I don't really see the vision. I think where both of these books are similar is they are told in a way where you're not going to get it until the end. You're not going to get it until you get it. Um, and I wish somebody would have warned me of that sooner so that I could have enjoyed this a little bit more. I didn't hate it. Um, but there is a lot going on here um, that I could have appreciated a little bit more had I had some context. This is why I say, listen to authors speak go to the book signing events watch the videos um do all of that because the how uh, uh how you are placed into a book not just based off of the author's writing right but the knowledge that you have is really going to help how like your experience with a book right it may not make you like it anymore it may not make you like it any less but sometimes we need to be placed in a book a certain way so I want to read this again. And then last but certainly not least, I have 
a grill is a body of water. This is a chunker. A big old thick thing. Oh child, not I got some of these pages dog ear, but I know I did that because um child. This was a book club pick, so I got all kind of stuff. This is I have 600 pages yeah almost 600 pages and it tells the story of Caravo there were a lot of gems in this book like she is kind of left in the village to live with her grandparents there's this story of her fa her grandfather's wives and one is liked and the other is not and her trying to figure that whole bit out um she eventually like moves to the um city to be with her father her mother's not in the picture like there's so many things in this book that um were really good and i want to experience them again i've been thinking about this book a lot lately um that happens to me where something will happen and it'll trigger things that have happened in books um which is always my signifier because it doesn't only happen to me with books it happens to me with a lot of different things excuse me but that's always my signifier that like i need that thing um or i need to read it again or there's something that I could be contributing for that. So don't don't ignore when people or things pop into your head because there's usually a message or a lesson attached to it, um, which is probably why I need to spend some time with this book again, um, which I'll probably do at the end of the year um, because it is a chunker. So there's that. And now, friends, we are at the end. So those are some books that I would like to reread like I told y'all in the beginning, some of these you will be seeing like videos for very soon. Um, the rest of them I'll get to when I get to chow. Um, because there's so many things that I want to read. So many things. So many things that I want to read. There's so many things that I want to read. It's such a great problem to have to be an avid reader. Um... So yeah, without further ado, if no one has told you today, I love you. You are kind, you are smart, you are important, if to no one else, to me. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And I will see you in the next video, friends. Mm -hmm.